Java is one of the most dominating programming language in the IT domain. Since its debut, Java has been changing the face of the world of computers. To make it more accessible, Oracle has provided an easy to use GUI from where you can easily download Java and use it without worrying or even any licensing. But what if one day Oracle comes knocking to your doorstep asking for thousands of dollars for using Java? Scary, right? Sorry to break it to you guys, but with the release of Java 11, this scenario has actually turned into a very scary reality. So do not worry guys, to avoid any such kind of situation and to clarify all your doubts, I, Arya, on behalf of Edureka, bring you this session on Java 11, where we will find out what's new in Java 11 and why it has swooped the Java developers off their feet. So without any further ado, let's get started. First and foremost, I will tackle the question of the R. That is Java 11 paid. Once we are clear about it, I will talk about the various features introduced in the new release of Java 11, followed by the list of features that has been disposed of. Furthermore, I will also discuss the list of features which have been deprecated preceding Java 11. And finally, I will conclude the session by drawing a clear line between the Open JDK and the Oracle JDK. So, is Java 11 really paid? Well, the answer will be a yes and a no. Let's start with the yes. Well, Java is paid if you're using it for commercial use. When you go to Oracle's site to download Java 11, as always, it asks you to accept the license agreement. What we generally do is blindly accept the agreement and download and start using Java. But if you look carefully here, they have mentioned in a highlighted box that are the important changes in Oracle JDK 11 license. Now, if you click on this link, it will take you to the license and agreement page of Oracle, where if you scroll down to the license rights and restrictions section, you will see that they have mentioned it quite clearly that you may not use the program for any data processing or any commercial production or internal business purposes other than developing, testing, prototyping, and demonstrating your application. Well, this point pretty much concludes the entire license agreement, but if you want to know more about the do's and don'ts of this license change, you can go ahead and read it from the official Oracle site. And Oracle being known for its aggressive nature regarding lawsuits and copyright issues, it's better to keep your cards clear. But as a matter of fact, the commercial license was always there. Earlier, it used to be yearly or one-time payment, but now Oracle has changed it to a monthly subscription, which will be helpful for much smaller organizations. Moving on, let me now tell you how Java is free. Well, the answer is simple. If you're using Java for personal or any non-commercial use, you don't have to pay anything. I hope now it's clear how Java 11 is paid and how you can also use it for free. Okay, now let's move further to see what all the new features that have been included in Java 11. To start with the first thing I would like to mention that we will get a new Java version release in every six months. Well, this has been followed since Java 8 resulting in three Java versions released within a year and a half. So now let me start off with the features that have been added in this version. First of all, we get lazy allocation of compiler threads. A new command line flag has been added to dynamically control compiler threads, which start only one compiler thread of each type during startup and to handle the start and shutdown of further threads dynamically. Next is updated local data to Unicode CLDR version 3.3. Now the local data based on the Unicode consortium CLDR, which stands for Common Local Data Registry, has been updated for JDK 11. The next update is the HTTP client. The HTTP client has been standardized in Java 11 by removing the previously incubating API located in the jdk.incubator.http package. Now any HTTP type imports are to be done from the standard package name that is java.net.http. Next is the addition of Brainpool EC support. The Sun EC provider has been enhanced to support four additional Brainpool curves and the parameters can be now created by using EC gen parameter spec objects. Next upgrade is the Epsilon garbage collector. This is the new experimental no operation garbage collector. It will handle memory allocation without implementing any actual memory reclamation mechanisms. Epsilon's use cases include testing for performance, memory pressure, and the virtual machine interface. It could also be used for short-lived jobs. Next up on our list is nest-based access control. Now nest-based access control introduces nests in which an access control context that aligns with the notion of nested types in Java language. Nests allow classes that are logically part of the same code entity but are compiled to distinct class files to access each other's private members 
without needing compilers to insert accessibility broadening bridge methods. The next addition to Java 11 is the key agreement with the curve 25519 and the curve 448. This agreement in cryptography is more efficient and secure than existing elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman scheme. The two elliptic curves, that is curve 25510 and curve 448, lend themselves to a constant time implementation and an exception-free scalar multiplication that is more resistant to a range of site channel attacks. Then we have a transport layer security, which is the TLS 1.3. It is an overhaul of the TLS protocol that offers a significant security and performance benefits. There is no goal, however, to support every feature of TLS 1.3. To minimize risks of incompatibility, TLS 1.3 will implement backward compatibility mode by default. Applications can turn this mode on and off as desired. The next addition we have is a collection.2 array method. It is a new default method that has been added to the collection interface. This method allows the collections element to be transferred to a newly created array of a desired runtime type. Next is a local variable syntax for Lambda parameters. According to this, a local variable syntax for Lambda parameters should align the syntax of a formal parameter declaration in an implicitly typed expression with the syntax of a local variable declaration. This could allow variables to be used when declaring formal parameters of implicitly typed Lambda expressions. The next addition to Java 11 is the flight recorder. Now it provides a low overhead data collection framework for troubleshooting both Java applications and hotspot JVM. Now, Flight Recorder has been a feature of Oracle's commercial JDK, but would have its source code moved to an open repository to make the features generally available from now on. Now, the next addition is the upgradation of platform APIs for Unicode support. In Java 11, the platform's APIs are now upgraded to support Unicode version 10.0. Support is expected in character and string classes in the language package. Then the numeric shaper class in the awt.font package and the BIDI, break, iterator, and normalizer classes in the text package. Next is the Z garbage collector, which is an experimental addition to Java 11. It is a low latency garbage collector that can handle heaps ranging from relatively small to very large heaps that are many terabytes in size. The list of new features doesn't end here, but the points which have been mentioned till now concludes the list of major additions. So now let's move on forward to check what all features have been removed from Java 11. The first on our list is the AWT Utilities class. Yes, the AWT Utilities class has been completely removed from Java 11 as it was already deprecated since Java 8. Next is the Applet Viewer Launcher. The Applet Viewer tool was deprecated in JDK 9 and thus removed in this version. Next is the Define class. Now the sun.misc.unsafe.define class has been removed and a public replacement of this class has been already introduced in Java 9. Next is the thread.destroy and the thread.stop methods. These threads have been finally removed from Java as they have been deprecated for several Java SE releases. Next is Java FX. The Java FX modules have been removed from the Oracle JDK in Java 11 and these modules were included in earlier releases of the Oracle JDK, but not in the Open JDK releases. Next is the Java Double E and the Corba modules. These modules are finally removed from the Java SE platform and the JDK as they were deprecated in Java SE 9 and with the declared intent to remove them in the future releases. Next is the Java deployment technologies. The Java plugin and the Java web start technologies that were deprecated in JDK 9 and marked as candidates for removal in JDK 10 have now been removed along with the Java control panel, which was used for configuring the deployment technologies. Next is the removal of JMC from the Oracle JDK. Now the Java mission control is no longer included in the JDK bundles, but is available as a separate download. Next is SNMP agent. Well, the JDK.SNMP module has been completely removed from Java 11 onwards. Next is format as default property. Now the system property of sun.local.format as default that was introduced in JDK 7 for backwards compatibility now has been removed. Finally, we have JVM Management MIP. The specification for JVM monitoring and management through SNMP and JVM Management MIB.MIP has been removed. Now the customers can use JMX to monitor and manage a running JVM and to access the standard set of metrics and operations. This concludes our list of features that has been removed from Java 11. 
Now let's move ahead and see what all features have been deprecated from this version and are expected to be completely wiped out of the future Java releases. Let's start with the thread pool executor. Now in previous versions of the thread pool executor, it had a finalized method that was used to shut down the thread pool. But in this version, the finalized method does nothing. This has no visible effects unless a subclass explicitly invokes the finalized method and relies on the executor being shut down. Next is the Nashorn JavaScript engine. The Nashorn JavaScript engine APIs and the GJS tool has been deprecated in this version with the intent to remove them in a future release. Next is the aggressive ops. The VM option of aggressive ops has been deprecated in JDK 11 and will be removed in the future releases. The option was originally supposed to enable experimental optimizations of the C2 compiler to improve performance of the specific benchmarks. Next is the support for commercial features. The unlock commercial features and the lock commercial features command line arguments have been obsoleted and will generate a warning message if used from this release onwards. Next is the stream based GSSC context methods. The stream based methods in GSSC context have been deprecated in this release since GSS APIs work on opaque tokens and do not have a defined wire protocol. Finally, last but not least is a deprecation of PAC 200 tools and API. The PAC 200 API and tools associated with it like PAC 200 and Unpack 200 have been deprecated and will be removed in a future release. Though they are still included in JDK 11, but will no longer be updated to support the latest class file format. Class files with unknown attributes will be passed through without compression. I hope now you have a pretty good idea of how Java 11 is going to change this programming world. Now let me now talk about the fundamental differences between open JDK and Oracle JDK based on Java 11. Well, I hope you already know about the open JDK and Oracle JDK. If you don't know, don't worry. Open JDK is an open source implementation of Java standard edition platform with the contribution from Oracle and open Java community. Whereas Oracle JDK is a JDK under the license by Oracle binary code license agreement. Although the goal to have open JDK and Oracle JDK binaries to be as close to each other as possible there remains, but still there are a few hairline differences. So let's dig in deeper into this and see what all features these two provides and how they differ. Now the open JDK offers Alpine Linux, whereas the Oracle offers Solaris JDK. Open JDK is offered only as a compressed archive like a dot GZ or a dot zip. Whereas the Oracle JDK offers installers such as MSI, RPM, DEP, etc., which not only place the JDK binaries in our system, but also contain the updated rules in some cases and handle some common configurations like set common environmental variables and establish file associations. Now, Open JDK offers only JDK, whereas Oracle JDK offers JDK and JRE both. Usage logging is only available in Oracle JDK. While it's not available on the open JDK open JDK also supports the unlock commercial features flag and will throw an exception whereas the Oracle JDK no longer requires the flag and will print a warning but continue execution if used now open JDK allows the use of unsigned third party crypto providers whereas Oracle JDK requires that third party cryptographic providers be signed with an Oracle provided certificate open JDK does not include any additional Java standard edition specifications such as serialization jar RMI whereas Oracle JDK does allow that now this brings us to the end of this video for Java 11's new features if you found this video informative then do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel do reach out to us for any doubts or queries regarding this video and happy learning I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!